All right. Hello, Estrella. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I wanted to ask you a few questions and um, through the lens of this is going to be information shared with undergraduate students uh, pursuing degrees in different arts based areas. Cool. All right. So the first question is, if you could just give us a brief intro, who are you? Um, how do you fit into the art sector and, you know, stuff like that? <laughs> um, well, my name is Estrella Esquiling, and I'm an arts administrator and a visual artist. I'm bivocational and I have been for 15 years. Um, and where I feel like I fit, um, the I feel like I, uh, I'm trained formally as a visual artist. I have a Bachelor of Fine Arts and a Master's, a Master of Fine Arts um, in uh, printmaking and inter, interdisciplinary um, studio art. However, I've always been the type of artist and human that is um, organized and kind of can see, um, you know, complicated projects or complicated challenges and break them down into parts, especially um, uh, challenges or projects that can be creative. And so I've immediately found myself as an organizer of ideas, of people, a connector of people. And I think that um, I, I would not be able to be a successful arts administrator if I wasn't also tapped into um, the minds of how creative people work and how easy it is to be a little frenetic and um, and so I do, you know, I, I love to associate both as an administrator and a visual artist because I think, you know, they really go hand in hand for me personally. Um, I, I live and work in Phoenix, Arizona, and that also informs my access to, um, you know, arts and, and, and social uh, commentary and, and um, uh, you know, just being in the proximity of, of the border. We do have a lot of access to conversations about more than just um, the arts and, and making and gallery exhibitions, museums. So it also positions those two vocations really well together. That's awesome. That's great. Yeah, I, I appreciate you uh, highlighting the fact that you can have multiple like lanes that you're in in the art sector, right? It's not just like admin is a big component of the field overall, right? Right, absolutely. Yeah. A, a, would you say it takes like unique skills or do you think your art practice, there were some transferable skills that you carried over into admin? Yes, uh, I'm trained as a printmaker. And so it's a very process heavy way of working. And um, there's a lot of setup before you get to the final image or the final work of art. And much the same way that printmaking is a long process, you start with your ideas, maybe a drawing, and then you create a matrix. And then, you know, whether that matrix is a stone, a litho stone that has to go through it's the process of etching, all of those steps you have to account for. And um, as a student or as someone who is working on a deadline, a printmaker can't just, you know, uh, do something one night before and then show up at, at a gallery or final project, you know, presentation with that piece. It does require some reverse planning. And I feel like that just applies directly to, you know, my work as a project manager, as a produ producer, um, you know, you have to manage your time, your budget, uh, the resources that you have, and, and you know, obviously the, the idea sometimes the ideas have to scale down and um, and that definitely plays a big role both in my studio practice as well as um, as an administrator working with other other people's ideas too awesome I love that um, the the next question is kind of I'm going to mush two together uh, the first part is can you describe art history in a few words and then how does or does art history inform your professional work yes um, I would describe art history in a few words um, as a documentation of the stories of human experience through cultural expression. And, um, and that might be through the making of objects or you know, the wearing of garments. 
um, you know, art history is really thinking about the, um, you know, documentation of human civilization uh, through telling stories about um, that the cultural expression. And how I feel like that shows up in my work is um, I really feel, this might sound a little corny, but I really feel like we're all walking into art history. We're walking into our shared history every moment. We have an opportunity to think about our influence, not only how we treat each other, um, how we advance, um, you know, in our, uh, with our politics and, and policies in the world, but also how we choose to address ourselves. Um, I also think art history in many cases uh, in the US and in the Western world, that story is, um, is often from one perspective and one kind of canonical perspective. Yes. Okay. Um, and in the same way that um, I, I believe that art history can and should become, we should become more aware of multiple perspectives, multiple voices and versions of stories. Um, I think that that shows up in my professional work when I think about um, professional ways of working and, you know, respectable ways of, of moving through budgets or projects or, or talking to people or seeking funding. Um, oftentimes, yes, there's a way that we can, you know, we've established, especially in the U.S. as a uh, method forward, but I think in, in considering you know, how many stories and perspectives there are, I think we should disrupt and challenge, interrupt some of the status quo um, or the way things have always been done and consider what is another perspective I can take into approaching X work, you know, whatever it is. I love that. And I love, uh, one of the things I grapple with is feeling like we're stuck, like when we think about art history that we're stuck with the canon but one thing I appreciate about, I, you know, seen your work and followed your, your process. I see your work as something that, you know, you understand and respect the canon, but you're also creating these new like veins of thought and ways to approach things. And it's not stagnant or stuck, you know, it's a foundational thing, but it's also flexible and, you know, it doesn't need to be put on this pedestal anymore. Right. 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 Yeah. I mean, like, you know, if, if we think about an end result or the artwork being like the center of a spoke of a wheel, you know, what are all the different spokes, you know, and, and ways to get to an end result, I think is, that is actually one of the most exciting things to me about being an artist mm -hmm. and, you know, a, a project manager, a creative problem solver. It's understanding that like my lived experience can inform what that path looks like to become a means to an end. And even sometimes just being able to show that process of, you know, like how we think about getting, you know, getting to some sort of next step in, um, in how we create and how we relate to each other. Yeah. I love that. So the next, you know, mash of questions is if you could describe global art in a few words and how this idea of global art, um, has it impacted your practice? And maybe especially during, you know, 2020, 2021, this idea of global. Right, right. Yeah. Um, boy, you know, that's so interesting because, I, you know, the idea of global and global art mm -hmm. feels, um, it feels a lot like who was getting to say what's global? You know, yeah. you know when, I, when I start to think about making definitions of things, I, I really start to think about um, who is who are the individuals who are deciding this lexicon. Um, and so before I start jumping to conclusions, I start to think about like who's making the definitions and, and what's what here. Um, yeah. And so, you know, global art to me, I guess, is more so on the side of, um, you know, majority culture. Like mm -hmm. who is finally paying attention? Who is finally including more than majority culture? Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, not to like hold a, a you know, flashlight to or a magnet uh, to uh, the Western world, but, you know, there's a lot of really amazing contemporary um, expressions, mm -hmm. uh, you know, dealing with social issues, dealing with the history, you know, histories of place and space that have, you know, that are happening right now in non-Western cultures 
but I do think that it's, you know, these definitions of like the global movement and stuff like that, those are being defined by, you know, Western world. Yes. Um, so I don't know. I don't know how to describe what global art is, except for the fact that it's like our acknowledgement that, you know, again, the, the Western canon isn't like the definitive, mm -hmm. you know, like that mode of working. And, um, um, you know, it, it, it's maybe uh, if we think about global art, we are, we're also thinking about spaces or experiencing creative expression in a more inclusive way, you know, so it's not in the like, you know, the white wall, you know, like typical way of experiencing the work. But, you know, even when I think about this exhibition that's happening right now in the West Coast, in the um, Coachella Valley Desert X, mm -hmm. um, Desert X and its third iteration, it's a biennial exhibition. Um, it's art outside, it's available 24 seven. And it's also representing ideas from all over the globe. You know, so maybe it's kind of like that. It's like, it's accessible, it's inclusive, lots of people's voices and it's transcending walls, literally. Yeah, definitely. Love Desert. Have you been to Desert X this year yet? I have not, but I'm going this weekend. So. Oh my God. <laughs> Coming Jealous. weekend. That'll be awesome. I think that this segues great into the final question is if you could share any tips on how to cultivate multiple vantage points in the arts. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to. Um, you know, I think any tips, so who's listening, right? Who's getting my tips? I think if you are a person who is thinking about how do I, you know, how do I cultivate multiple vantage points, uh, you know, into, into the arts or into my, you know, the sector that I'm influencing. Um, whether I'm an arts administrator, I'm a, a visual artist or something in between. Um, you know, if you're coming from a perspective of a majority culture, um, uh, or if you're coming from a perspective where you really are able to understand and recognize the spectrum where you fit in this like spectrum of privilege, I think being a listener and sitting in spaces and, and really trying to listen and, and um, empathize with creative expression, with modes of working, with materials, ways of exhibiting, with language, um, mobility, um, outside of yourself. Um, and we all have, we all fall into this like X, Y, and Z access of privilege, right? Um, and so I'd, I'd say one tip is is figuring out what it means to listen, be an active listener, engage, and understand where you, how you connect, and how you might empathize with like, wow, this is wholly different than how I understand the world. But like, where does this have a place in my exhibition? Where does this have a place, you know, in some sort of critical discourse that might, um, you know, really might push? We're planting the seeds. We have the privileges visual artists, arts administrators, art historians, curators, to plant a seed for viewers, for publics, you know, whether you're students or otherwise, um, to start to understand um, perspectives outside of our own. Like, you know, mm -hmm. when we start to do it, then we replicate rhizomatically, I'd say. Yep. And then if you're coming from a culture that is historically minoritized, um, and you haven't had the privilege to see yourself represented in, um, you know, uh, art spaces, galleries, books, you know, textbooks. Um, I'd say one of my tips is to figure out how to continue to be yourself and find ways to be heard. Take the seat, you know, uh, take an opportunity to introduce yourself. Let your voice be heard. Write the article, co-write, you know, or put putting yourself out there to acknowledge the fact that you might not see yourself represented, but how can you um, be, how can you start representing yourself and allow yourself to be heard? Um, and unfortunately, so many of us who identify as Black, Indigenous, or people of color, um, we have to either forge our own paths or we need to find ourselves safe spaces and, and you know, like make a posse and all walk together and say like, you know what, like our voices are gonna be heard in order for us to see more diversity, in order for us to see more inclusion and, you know, a global mindset, a mindset that's just challenging, you know, again, challenging the status quo. 
um, we need to sometimes do it ourselves first to be that example and, you know, have a plus one culture. You know, I'm going to, if I'm invited in, I'm going to bring my plus one, <laughs> you know, yeah. always. I'm just going to make that happen so that more of us can have those opportunities. So it's sort of like two sides of the same coin. You know, we need to listen. We need to participate. We need to self-advocate as well. And sometimes that self-advocacy looks like, um, you know, I've been given lots of opportunities. And when I continue to get opportunities, I found myself to be privileged enough to, instead of saying yes to them, say, you know, thank you for considering me, but have you mm -hmm. actually thought of this person yeah. who hasn't, you know, and giving that sharing space, taking space and, 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 um, and making space for others. I think that's a great, that last tip is great. Yeah. Once you have those opportunities, yeah. How can you create more, more room for other people to continue that helpful addition of new voices, new perspectives. And I think that's, that's a really, I think, powerful tip for everybody. I'm sitting with that now, like, yeah, I like, I'm going to put that in my own notes and, you know, my own practice. I think that's great. It's a daily, I think it's a daily reminder, especially like when we do, when we are working, you know, it's a daily reminder to, you know, understand how, how am I putting into practice my values? And if I value making space for others, how am I doing that um, as an artist, as a maker? as a curator, as an administrator. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because our work is really an extension, yeah, of our values, our morals, or however you want to frame it. And I, I think sitting with that, also what I'm hearing is like, you know, take time to establish what do you value? I think that's something oh, yeah. I didn't have time or space, you know, going through school or having three jobs, you, you don't get that time. So it's, you either have to make it or take it, you know, and yeah. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I really appreciate this. Um, and I, I know this will be helpful for the RIMCAD students. So I, thank you for taking the time. And I will put links. This is for everybody watching. I will put links to your site and your work. So if you guys want to check out Estrella, please do show her some love. And thank you so much. I'll give you some applause. Thank you. <laughs> the opportunity. <laughs> <laughs>